tickets in the city when we in around town. Next door neighbors telling us that it's too late. Baby, running things, keeping it real, keeping it hood. And if I'm a folk coming up in the game, never ever let it get without you, man. The world don't move without you, man. You might be the next come up in the game. You on your grind, so stop hating. Hey. Under pressure, I does this. That's why the fans just love it. I give them hugs and plugs. The dynamic big guard out of Michigan State, Jason Richardson and the Charlotte Bobcats will try to steal one on the road in this exhibition matchup against the up-and-coming New Orleans Hornets. And last season's leader in offensive rebounds, Tyson Chandler, the Charlotte Bobcats versus the New Orleans Hornets on the 2K Sports Network. The two-time consecutive dunk champion, Jay Rich, Jason Richardson, is laced up and ready to go as we await tip-off. This guy is more than a high flyer. Jay Rich can stroke the three, and if you crowd him on the perimeter, he'll go by you and posterize you. Along get, get me out of here! Get him! This is Kevin Help me! And now, as we're about set, T-Mobile presents the starting five lineups. And without further ado, it looks like they're setting up for the tip-off. The Hornets control the opening tip and will get this one started. Hall, he gets hammered and he'll head to the line. One of the bright young teams in the NBA from last season, the New Orleans Hornets, led by David West and, of course, the incomparable Chris Paul. This team would seem to be on the rise, Clark, and maybe a finalist in the NBA. Well, they'll be right there. They had a terrific year last season. They've got all of their main pieces back in place, but it's always harder to stay at the top than it is to climb towards the top. But they've got good pieces in Paul and West in particular. 
And now our sideline reporter, Cheryl Miller, has some information for us. Let's check in with the Gatorade Around the Cooler update. Well, I had a moment to speak with Byron Scott, coach of the Hornets. I asked him if he had a plan for stopping all the speedsters. He told me getting back on defense is the key. Speed shows up most in transition, and we feel if we could take that away from them, we have a good chance of winning. All right. Yeah, so important. Against a speedy team like this, you've really got to sprint back on D, or you risk giving up easy baskets. Felton gets the reach-in call. That's his first foul of the game. In the bonus, he'll go to the line. He obviously thought he got the ball. All ball, but the refs thought otherwise. He's off on the second. Richardson dumps it off. Backs in. Wallace throws it up. Can't nail the jump. Here's Peterson. Can't get the buzzer beater. We've reached the end of the first, and it's a barn burn. Still close, though. Six to four. The Hornets with the slight lead. They've been all over the offensive glass. Buffet style on the board. Plenty of seconds. And that's why they hold the advantage in second chance. Soft touch to lay it in. He wasn't thinking at all on that pass. That's what you call bad decision making. Augustine, the finisher. Graceful finish. Stojakovic inbounds the ball. And that concludes the first half. The score, 12 to 10. Man, there's been a lot of offense so far. Both sides are having no problems finding the net. Quite a show so far, that's for sure. Let's go to the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Ozzy Muhammad has made his presence felt with his shot block. His total at one. Chris Paul is our top scorer so far. He's got six. Now let's take a look at the team stats from the first half. The Hornets have been finding good looks, as you can see from their shooting percentage. Yeah, they really seem to be in a rhythm. But can they continue their hot shooting in the second half? Well, the second half will begin in just a few moments. Wallace inbounds it to start the second half. Felton. Hold him. Felton isn't consistent enough out there to win. More heavy defensive attention. They gambled correctly on that one. Now for the Gatorade around the cooler update, let's check in with the third member of our team, Sherman. Sherman? Yeah, as the Hornets came out for the second half, I spoke with Coach Byron Scott. He told me that they'll have to elevate their game if they want to hold on to this lead. He said that we can't rely on our play in the first half to get us through the game. He went on to say we are still making mistakes out there, and if we want to win, we'll have to correct those the remainder of the game. Let's see if his players can deliver. He's got the right idea to push his team. Games in the NBA are often decided by run, and if they give one up, their first half...
one of the most promising young talents in the league. Out of Zanesville, Ohio, Kevin Martin and the Sacramento Kings will try to take one on the road in this exhibition game against the reigning Pacific Division champion, Los Angeles Lakers. And last year's most valuable player, Kobe Bryant, the Sacramento Kings versus the Los Angeles Lakers on the 2K Sports Network. He does it all, the Black Mamba. Kobe Bryant getting ready to roll. Sleek and lethal from anywhere on the court, and he gets it done at the defensive end, too. This is Kevin Harlan here with Clark Hill. Show Miller is our sideline reporter. Give, give me now, as we, without further ado, it looks like they're setting up for the tip-off. The Lakers control the opening tip and will get this one started. Dishes it to the free throw line, takes it up. The game's first basket was off the shot by Bynum. And now our sideline reporter Cheryl Miller has some information for us. Let's check in with the Gatorade around the cooler update. Well, Kevin, prior to the game, I spoke with Bill Jackson, coach of the Lakers. He told me that he wants his team to focus on the defensive end of the floor. He feels that if they can lock him down and keep this from being a shootout, they'll be in a great position to win this game. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Fisher laid in softly off the glass. Miller inbounds the ball. Fisher found the gap and got right to the rack. No good. 18 seconds left in the first. To Bryant. Dumps it off to Odom. My goodness, he can't be happy about that play. That was ugly. Here's Udrich. Flips it in for two. Fisher, way up court. We're at the end of one. The score, seven to two. The Lakers with the early lead. Well, they're off to a hot start offense. All right, the second quarter should begin momentarily. Miller inbounds it to start the second quarter. Williams. Offline. William is so hard to contain down low, but that's excellent defense. Fisher. Selman gets the rebound. Looked like he had the angle. That's a bad miss that close to the goal. Offline. Skips it to Odom. Miller snatches the defensive rebound. Here, they'll want to hold for one shot. Here's Bryant. It's blocked. He smothered the shooter and swatted that one right off course. Williams. Odin gets the board inside. And that concludes the first half. The score, 7-5. This has been a fast-paced game, Kevin. Yeah, both teams are lighting up the scoreboard. Now it's time for our T-Mobile Halftime Report. John Salmons has made his presence felt with his shot block. Well, the second half will begin in just a few moments. Selmans inbounds it to start the second half. Udrin. Nice board by the four-year mayor out of St. Joseph High School. Time for the Gatorade around the clear update. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Well, as he came to the Lakers locker room, I spoke with Coach Phil Jackson. He told me that they'll have to elevate their game if they want to hold on to this lead. He said that we can't rely on our play in the first half to get us through the game. He went on to say, we are still making mistakes out there, and if we want to win, we'll have to correct those the remainder of the game. Let's see if his players can deliver. He's got the right idea to push his team. Games in the NBA are often decided by run, and if they give one up, their first half lead could be wiped away. That's right, Clark. We can never get too comfortable. Fine. Did a heck of a job there. 
contested the shot and recovered to crash the board. Passes it to Bynum. The feed to Gasol. Money! Miller inbounds the ball. Udra. That's the end of the third, and it's been a shootout. Still tightly contested with the score. 11 to 8. Fit. All right, the fourth quarter should begin momentarily. Odom inbounds it to start the fourth quarter. Less than one minute left. Fisher. And they come up with a huge stop defensively. Here's the break. Selman. Good. Miller does a great job of seeing the whole floor. He led his man right to the bucket with that pass. The Lakers will look to run down the clock. Bryant. Final. That's a big time block right there. This is still anyone's game. Martin. Called him. The D got a little lucky that time. That's a shot he should have made. To Gasol, Bynum. Banks it home. The Kings take a full timeout. They're losing by three. Six seconds left to the fourth. Clark, what's your take? You need a three here to tie, but there's still some time left on the clock. If you can get a quick layup for two, I'd take that and then five. Hudrick inbounds the ball. Selman. Knocks down the trifecta. The Lakers call time. to Bryant. Oh, oh, man! Ooh, off target. He got it up in time, but the potential game winner won't run. Time expires, and we're going to overtime. All right. Okay, both teams getting ready. They'll jump it off and jump... play Kevin they had the score there to stay alive and he stepped up big time yeah he sure did the Lakers get the tip graceful finish Bryant drives so hard to the hoop unstoppable if you don't get a body in front he wasn't thinking at all in that pass that's what you call bad decision making Kobe can't cash in a critical possession here pressure's on who rises to the occasion? Martin has the right idea. Squeeze in close and knock it down. Bryant. Miller snatched down. Kevin, he doesn't miss those layups off. Interior D made him think about that one. Hoodrick. Blocked. Coach Jackson signals for a timeout. Odom inbounds the ball. Kobe dumps it off to Bynum. The Lakers can't cash in. More. Oh! Ooh, off target. He got it up in time, but the potential game winner won't run. Another tie, and we're going to have a second overtime. Oh. The Lakers control the tip. 
Kobe. Rebounded. Final. You have to block this guy out, Kevin. He's just too active on the boards to be left alone. Selman takes the lead. Oda inbounds the ball. Feeds to Fisher. Throws it up. Off target from downtown. The Kings still hold a narrow lead. It's a nail biter, care. This one's coming right down to the wire. With the shot. Hold him. Final dumps it off. Couldn't keep a handle on. In these close games, you can't afford too many mistakes. Miller passes to Martin. Miller passes back to the left side. Finishes with the soft touch. The Lakers call time, and they've got one left. They're behind by three. Two seconds left in overtime. Clark, what are your thoughts? They need a three to tie, and they have enough time here to get a good look if they play their cards right. We'll see how they do. Udrin hasn't had a good game so far, and he's going to sit down for a while. Substitution on the court. Fisher inbounds the ball to tie the Kings. Length the distance as they outlast the Lakers 20 to 17. In recognition of his stellar performance, Selmans is our Jordan brand player of the game. He came up big in the fourth, down the stretch. When some players get tired, that's when he really made his mark. Well, that's it for us. On behalf of Clark Kellogg, Cheryl Miller, and me, Kevin Harlan, thanks for tuning in.